Hello everyone, welcome to the fourth episode of Undersea Dive Live Paint Along. This painting, oh I love it, everything about it is just excellent. And I hope that if you've been painting along with me, you enjoy, you've enjoyed what, uh, what you've been doing. And yeah, maybe um, this might actually be quite a few people's first times painting underwater because it's a bit of a unique thing. But um, yeah, with that being said, let's get right into it. And yeah, first thing I'm going to do is texturize the sand down here at the bottom. So I'm going to zoom into there. Let's get right into it. And the first thing I'm going to do today is I'm going to grab just a hint of a kind of dark sand, really dark sand color. And I'm just going to sprinkle it in lightly on my sand. And it'll look like a, it'll just look like some darker greens. Um, just helps break up the sand at the bottom, make it more interesting, and hopefully adds a little bit of character to it as well. And also, today I'm thinking I'm going to try and paint a crab and a clownfish. Actually, probably the clownfish today. The clownfish and maybe another um, anemone coral, because those are always super cool. So, but the first thing I'm going to do is, yeah, the sand. So, I'm mixing it up, and if, uh, if you haven't already watched the first, um, the first three episodes of this live paint-along, I suggest that you go ahead and do that. There will be cards up above for those three, and yeah, so... I've got my brown right here. It's a very, uh, oh, that's out of focus. It's a very dark brown, but I'm just going to start sprinkling it on here. And I'm not going to need much to finish the effect. I'm also thinking I really want what I call a brain coral because um, it looks like a brain. It's like a green brain coral. Ooh, that'll be nice. Like maybe right here. Ooh, yeah, that's what I'll do today. That, I would love that. But already this just a little bit of dots right here and there. It's already making a big difference because the, the sand was a bit boring before. You're like, okay, I get that that's sand, but it doesn't really look like sand. Sand is a bit of an interesting composite because it's not one type of material. It's dozens of rocks crushed together and you kind of want to show that. You want to show like, hey, there's more than just a dark yellow blob here. This is actually like a living, not, not living, sorry, I messed that up, <laughs> but you want to convey that this is an interesting part of the uh, oceanscape and by uh, adding those small details you can start to convey that and yeah once again not much paint at all but you can really start to see actually maybe you can't in on this video but it really starts to add some major details to this painting 
So, um, let's see, what should I do next? Yeah, I'm gonna put a brain coral, like, right here, right in the corner. And also, I think I want to do some more of these red fire corals. Those are also, oh. But yeah, first, the brain coral. Now this is going to be tricky. I think the first thing I'm going to do is just a dark green background. Because if you make a background, that's you can get the shape of what you want. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, I'll make a dark green one, because right now my painting, it kind of has a lot of everything. Of course, it's got a lot of blue, that's a obvious, but it's got a lot of reds, a lot of oranges, um, quite a few pinks, a lot of yellows in the fish and in this bright coral right here um, but it doesn't have much green it uh I mean compared to most paintings it actually doesn't have much green at all uh, so I'm gonna change that right here and oh gosh this I'm playing with fire here this is a bit of a dangerous operation. You know, I'm going to make this go behind the red coral. This red coral I'm definitely going to have to do a bunch of touch up with. And it never really was the best of corals anyway, so maybe I can make it better. And, uh, yeah. Ooh, gosh. Yeah, I'm probably sound like a broken record here, but I'm really playing with fire. And sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes it's good to just charge on into it and see where it takes you and uh i might fall victim to my own my own sayings because ooh, this is this really might not go well but i think that this is actually a pretty good shape and once i make it a uh, brighter color you know i'm gonna go ahead and zoom in because you can probably barely see what I'm doing because it's already pretty dark on the canvas. So. Oh, wrong well, way. I always do that. There we go. That's the. Here's the coral. And honestly, I wouldn't be too surprised if you can't even see it right now. Because this green background is almost as dark as the black behind it. But it still is... Ugh. The light went out again. It'll come back on in a few minutes. Yeah. The... As I said before, the... Uh, my art studio is probably the only room in our house that hasn't been renovated. Oh, there we go. It's probably the only room in our house that hasn't been renovated since 1979 when the house was built. So, yeah, it's a bit... It's an interesting art studio, to say the least. Um, but I make it work and still enjoy every moment of it. Now, I do think I'll come out with a video kind of soon on how to organize your art studio. And uh, that's the kind of thing that, I mean, it's really actually going to make a big difference how you organize your art studio when it comes to how well you paint. Because the more organized you are, um, the more time you can spend actually painting. Because it's like, if say you have a rack for dedicated to a few brushes, it doesn't take much thought to just grab the brush from the right spot and put it back in the right spot. 
but it does take a lot of thought to go rummaging around for it, and it takes a lot of time. And if you can just get organized, then it's easy to stay organized. Um, like, for example, this is a quick studio tour, but I've got right here my palette, and it goes blacks on the far left, yellows, oranges, reds, blues in the middle, browns, purples, greens, and whites. And I know where everything on my palette is, because it always stays right there. And I've probably saved a considerable amount of time during my painting by doing that. And your time, the time that you save really just goes on to be more time invested in your paintings, right? And uh, that way you can be happier with your end product um, for spending the same amount of time. Because I know time is one of the biggest challenges that I face as a painter. Like, I'll go for weeks on end without painting, and then I'm just like, ah, oh, darn it, I really wish that it didn't take so much time. Because it is a hard, that's one of the hard parts of painting. It takes a really long time, and sometimes you don't even get a very good end result. And that's okay though, that's part of the experience. You know what, actually, I need to let that coral dry for just a, a little bit. Um, I'm working with acrylics, so that shouldn't take long at all. But I'm gonna go ahead and move over to... I'm gonna try to paint another... I'm gonna paint a yellow fire coral. Um, it's gonna go right there. I love fire corals because you get to use the really small brushes and make really nice fine details. And luckily enough for me, I already have a little bit of yellow, but it's the wrong color. So pour some more and yep, here I go. Now. Um, on camera, this it's actually mirrored from what I'm doing. For example, this is my right hand, but it looks like my left hand. This is the kind of change that really affects how your canvas goes. Like a color like yellow, whoo, it's a, it's an intense color. I mean, like if you drop down just a little bit of yellow, whoo, it'll, it draws the eyes, it really changes many, many things about your painting. And sometimes that is a good thing and sometimes it's a bad thing. It, really changes based on where you are. I think when you're under the ocean, it doesn't actually matter that much because you're still, because it's a poppy color and that'll change, and everything under the ocean is pretty poppy. So I would say like, it doesn't really matter too much, but above, above ground, um, it, it actually really will make a difference. Like if you add a single yellow aspen to your painting, you will see nothing but that aspen for the entire life of the canvas unless you either A, paint more of those aspens, or B, you uh, get rid of it. And, yeah, 
Like, if you're looking for a color that pops, red and yellow, that, that's, that's all I have to say, just red and yellow. Um, so yeah, right here, I'm just going over this, and I love this small brush, although I'm not even, I'm having a little bit of trouble today with it's probably in how I'm collecting the paint. I'm doing that wrong. With the uh, other coral, I have fish swimming through it, and I don't know if I really want to do that with this one as well, because it's having fish swim through it. Well, you don't want to repeat the same thing too much on your painting, and I kind of would think that it wouldn't seem very uh, original if I just kept painting schools of fish swimming through my corals, but um, maybe, maybe just a little bit of, um, maybe a single fish would look good, might actually look amazing, as long as he's not yellow. <laughs> and you would actually be surprised, there's quite a few fish that are um, yellow, and Yellow and blue fish are really common. Ooh, there's, there's some cool fish that I've seen in like an underwater puzzle that are blue, that are orange and white. And ooh, that looks good. They're they're like they're, all, they're also pretty big and they have really kind of just strange features. I might have to pull up a picture of them and just try to paint one, because the thing with fish is that you can't really mess up. If you accidentally make a fish that doesn't really exist, like I totally messed up with the angelfish as a, from earlier on in the painting, but I, they still look like angelfish because no one really has an exact image in their head of what every single fish will look like. And with schools of fish, you can be really inaccurate and it still looks good. I'm almost, like right now, I'm almost making kelp. Ooh, that gave me an idea. Kelp in the background. Now there's, there's a good idea. Just like barely you can barely see it, but just a little bit of kelp growing out of the background. I think that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> so I want to talk just a little bit about the paint supplies that I'm using right now. Because they're very... Um, the, and mainly just the brushes. I mean, there's not much when it comes to uh, acrylic or uh, paints. When it comes to me, I just use acrylics, and that's about it. But I think I really want to say a good, fine brush is kind of the key to most paintings. I mean, a good broad brush can get you a good background, but those are easy to find. A really nice fine brush, and I probably will make a video about this in the future. A nice fine brush is really hard to come by, but so useful. I mean, I've ended up using this brush more than any other, and I just got it. Like, I love it so much.
Um, yeah. Oh man, I can't get that idea of kelp out of my head now. That'd be a really nice feature for the background. Because right now I've kind of got just a big open ocean right here, and it doesn't really um, have much in it. Obviously it's got a sea turtle that still looks like a Simpson, um, and it's got a some angelfish and a small school of fish, but not that much else. I think I really would like to try and break it up a little bit, and I don't want to add anything man-made. That's, uh, in my mind, if unless it's like a log cabin, anything man-made kind of ruins your painting. Um, but yeah, kelp in the background. I could totally see just making it like barely visible, but still you can see it and it Ooh, that would look good. But yeah, once I finish this fire coral, I can't get sidetracked. I'm just gonna I'm gonna do my brain coral next. <laughs> That's, don't get sidetracked, Torsten, just paint what you had on your mind first. Make a mental note of the kelp. Um, so then, yeah, I think I'm making these kind of layered on top of each other so that they don't look too boring because if they all the key with anything as detailed as this is that you make sure that they layer over each other like for example if they just didn't layer over each other at all and you just had them avoid each other then it doesn't look like one organism because believe it or not like this kind of fire coral is one organism but if you um, don't have them overlapping each other a bit, then it doesn't actually look like it's one organism. It looks like two corals that don't like each other. Which, maybe they don't like each other, but they still grow next to each other because that is the life of a coral. I don't like you! No, I don't like you! Darn it, this is where... This is where we started growing and... I guess I can't change that. Oh well, I'm stuck with a neighbor that I don't like. <laughs> and then, yeah, they just... Eat. So yeah, I guess even if the kelp, or not kelp, even if the corals don't like each other, they're stuck with each other. <laughs> it's fun to think about. Like, imagine you and your neighbor literally... It's... Like, you can't move for your whole life. You're just stuck in neighboring houses, like, Hey, turn the radio down! No, you turn your radio down. I can't hear mine. <laughs> and then they just keep going like that. Okay, I like how this is coming already. It looks... I'm definitely going to have to go through and add just a little bit more branches to each one. Because these are, um, if you see one in real life, or more likely a picture of one, I mean, I haven't seen one in real life because I live in Colorado, but uh, if you ever see one, you'll notice that they're very much like, there's so many tentacles that you literally can't see through. Um, and I don't want to paint that many tentacles, but... That still would be pretty cool to see. So I'm probably going to paint another one behind these guys. And I'm going to extend this one all the way down to more like here. Ooh, yeah, that looks good. Oh, 
Hoo hoo hoo. Yeah. And next to the purples and pinks, yeah, it really, really pops. Okay, gonna make the next one. We'll see how many I decide to make, cause they're very, they draw your eye a considerable amount. So I don't want to make so many of them that they kind of distract from the rest of the painting, but. I do like their appearance and they still they still look really cool. So maybe I'll add this one and see how I'm liking it. You can always come back to something and make it better. Like with these corals I'm probably gonna end up doing another layer of them, maybe off camera. Um just to make them more opaque so that you actually can see them. Because right now you can kind of see through everything. And it's not like my other corals, which are very solid and look like you can't see through them. This one's almost like semi transparent. So I'm probably going to end up going over it again. But I know that's kind of boring, so maybe I'll do that off camera. Now here is the main shaft of this new guy, and I've taken great pains to make sure that it is behind this other one. Yeah, ooh, that looks good. Looks really good. So, yeah, I'll just make the branches of this one, and then one thing, another good thing is that you always take a look at your canvas from far behind. I know from personal experience that it's really easy to just be caught up in what's happening right at your canvas, like when you're looking at it from eight inches away. I had to do a quick estimation. I would say my face is eight inches away from the canvas and yeah if you take a look at it from behind you don't start you stop worrying about the slight details and more about just kind of how it fits in with everything like for example I, I would only look at this when I want to determine how the uh, how it looks with the um, like the branches intertwining but I don't want to, but like if I'm looking at how it looks with three of the entire things, then I would look at it from afar when I can see the whole canvas and take it all in at once. And I mean, that's a lesson probably everyone can learn. It's very important that you just don't get so caught up in what's going on right then and there that you, yeah, just kind of stop and enjoy the roses or whatever, however the saying goes. I don't actually know. Yeah, okay. I'm going to take a step back, look at it. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, I'm loving how that's looking. And, oh gosh, we're almost out of time. Well, that wasn't a uh, bad session. So, I'm uh, going to do a quick little showcase of what we did. We did this guy right here, looking fantastic, and I'll probably finish that again. And, we did the uh, outline of this guy, and I will do that next painting session as well. Um, but for now, I'm, uh, yeah, I really hope that you enjoyed today's, well, <laughs> I hope that you've enjoyed today's um, painting live experience. I hope that maybe you uh, took the 
leap of faith and started trying some really detailed things like this one. Um, and I hope that, yeah, you got some motivation from this. So, thanks for watching. My name is Torsten. If you liked this video, please leave a like. And if you want to see more of these in the future, make sure to subscribe. But for now, I will see you later.